A team of researchers think they found a way to slow down, or maybe even prevent Arctic sea ice from melting. And they're going to do this by covering it with sand. Now anyone that's ever been to a beach before can tell you that walking on sand burns your feet more than it cools them. And you're right, sand absorbs a lot of sunlight and it can get pretty hot. So that raises the question, why are these scientists using sand? Well, the researchers aren't using beach sand in their experiment. Instead, they have this fine crystalline sand. It almost looks like sugar or salt. It's made of the same stuff that regular sand is, silica. Only theirs is white. So how does this stuff work? Well, it works through a property that scientists refer to as albedo. Albedo is the measurement of how much something reflects visible light. See the fresh snow atop the mountains over there? That snow will reflect around 90% of all visible light. But those trees that surround it, those will absorb about 90% of all incoming visible light, instead reflecting only about 10%. So what about sand from the beach? Well, this brownish stuff will only reflect about 40% of incoming light. But the special sand the scientists are using, they say it reflects about 90% of incoming visible light. That's about as good as fresh snow. The scientists are testing this special sand on a remote lake in Alaska where sea ice has shrank. Open water absorbs nearly all sunlight, and thin sea ice reflects only about 50% of it. So the plan is to sprinkle this sand atop thin sea ice in the hopes that it bumps up the amount of sunlight it reflects. At least, that's the plan anyways. And if these preliminary tests work, we can expect to see larger applications. This solution isn't without worry. This type of fix is called geoengineering, and that is the large-scale, deliberate intervention of our climate. And many scientists are wary of geoengineering because we may not yet know the full consequences of our actions. For all we know, we could be introducing something that, 10 years down the line, may have way worse effects than what we're seeing already. Also, this is just a band-aid solution, and there is the possibility that certain countries will see this band-aid solution as an actual solution, and then see no need to reduce their carbon emissions any further. So does this mean that we shouldn't bother with these short-term solutions? No, it doesn't. We should always contribute to the cause in any way that we can. But we should make sure that the consequences don't outweigh the benefits. And it's also important to recognize that the best, and really only way to prevent climate change, is through reducing our emissions.